In this video, I want to talk about an open source typesetting technology that you can connect and integrate with FileMaker. Now, first off, typesetting is kind of this old term that we used to see all the time because people would be using PageMaker or PrePress or would be doing this sort of printing work where you would be laying out documents on the computer and setting them up to run on a printing press because everything was paper. And these days, of course, people lay things out, then they output them to PDF or they otherwise take screenshots or shoot the stuff around the world digitally. Now typesetting is this idea of laying out a document for printing, right? And of course with modern technology people take this for granted. But if you need advanced design of a page, even if it's PDF, then most people think about Adobe InDesign, which is kind of the modern standard for typesetting and laying out a page. Of course, if you're not advanced enough to be using InDesign, then you're probably using a very advanced Word template, some really fancy wrapping and all sorts of charts and integrations, things like that. Well, there are practical limits to what Word can do. And of course, when people move up to InDesign, that's really a handful and it's expensive. And of course, there are limits to what it can do as well. However, there's an open source language that you can use to describe an advanced page. So what I'm talking about is LaTeX. LaTeX is kind of like HTML. It's actually text code, but it describes how to lay out text, images, items onto a page. And it does it with a high degree of precision. In fact, this is used a lot by scientists, researchers, or business people who have advanced reporting needs. So if you need a basic sales report, or you're printing out a basic letter, then of course you can lay that out in FileMaker. And if that's not sophisticated enough, then you would lay it out in Word and you would use some sort of plugin like Scribe from 360 Works to have FileMaker talk to Word and you could take data out of FileMaker and populate it in there. We've done that. It works pretty well, we've shot videos on it. However, above that level is where you need to use something like LaTeX. So imagine that LaTeX is like HTML. But where HTML tells you how to render something on a web browser, LaTeX is how to lay it out with precision on a printed page, which also means that it translates to PDF quite easily. If you're in higher education, you're a researcher, you're a writer potentially, or you need advanced reports, or maybe you're trying to create a catalog out of FileMaker, and really Microsoft Word can't get there, and you don't want to wrestle with maybe InDesign, then LaTeX might be just what you need. It's free, it's open source. The only trick is that you have to connect it to FileMaker. So in the following video, one of my engineers who happens to be working on his PhD on the side, found this technology and started using it in his own advanced reporting. So it's quite impressive. And if you have questions about this technology, feel free to email us at support at RC Consulting. Hi, my name is Jonathan Ray. I'm a FileMaker developer here at Richard Carlton Consulting. And today I have an example file for you that shows how FileMaker can work in conjunction with the LaTeX technology in order to do some reporting features that FileMaker would not be able to do otherwise. What is LaTeX? LaTeX is not a synthetic rubber. In this case, we're talking about a programming language for word processing. So most people are used to a word processor like Microsoft Word or Adobe InDesign, pages that comes with your Apple computer, something like that. But in distinction from that, LaTeX is a word processing language that is plain text based. So it's not a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, word processing language, but rather it is plain text based. And this is Tech Studio, one of the LaTeX clients that you might be able to use. And so you see here, we're looking at code. It's almost like HTML is for the web, LaTeX is for word processing. So you're able to pop the hood and look at the underlying code for your word processing document. And you're able to design it to the very granular level and do things that Microsoft Word and InDesign and things like that would not be able to do. Okay, so here's a couple examples of what you can do with LaTeX using FileMaker. This sample file I have queued up only has one table, a couple fields. It has you know, the example name, the place to actually store the LaTeX text, and that type of thing. It has one layout, and that's it. 
So we're not using any reporting layouts, and that's key. All it is is this sample code here for each record. It's just text. And what I've done is I've put that text file and a couple related files such as any pictures that the file might include or something in each of these records. So that's key that all we're dealing with is text and so that's key once we hit this create PDF. Here's an example of an invoice that's created and again all it is is using text where we don't have an invoice layout in FileMaker. So when I click this button it's going to tell my, uh, my Apple computer to generate a PDF using the LaTeX engine that I have pre-installed on my computer, similar to needing to install the PHP engine in order to generate a web page. In the background, I've already installed the LaTeX engine. Okay, I'm going to create PDF. And you see in the background, it runs a little process, a bash script that has only a couple lines in it and it tells my Mac computer to run this LaTeX file and you can see we have a pretty designed invoice again with no corresponding layout in FileMaker to go with it all this is just formatted text based on that LaTeX engine alright let's go on to the next one so we know that we can do things like that um, invoices but here's a couple things that that might be a little bit more difficult okay here's a double-sided calendar let's take a look at that and give it a couple seconds and you can see here's a formatted yearly calendar there let's look at the next one a month calendar and you can see in month format and so forth and again in this text we're telling it exactly what type of styles to use, what kind of colors, and that type of thing. So almost like CSS, if you're familiar with that uh, programming language. Let's go on to the next one. Here's some charting features that LaTeX allows you to do. You can see here you have full control over all the customization of these different charts. Go some miscellaneous charts here. And I'll say that this is cross-platform. LaTeX can be installed on both Mac and PC. A FileMaker file can be developed with a button that could run on both too, so it's not limited to Apple computers. Here are some of these examples for charting. And we're not using the built-in FileMaker charts. All of these graphical interfaces that you're seeing here is just based on text that we send the LaTeX engine. This is interesting. It's a genealogy tree. So I'm telling it to uh, give me a specific tree based on names that I give it and that type of thing. And again, just all stored right here. That's the entire piece of data. Here's some pie charts. Here are some things that we couldn't do within FileMaker. Some of these types of looks here. Here's an example of a business card template where it's printing out business cards. You can see it's using some graphics here. This also illustrates that you can do all sorts of different labeling if you need to without creating a label layout in FileMaker. You can tell it its uh, size dimensions and that type of thing. Here's an example of a business letter. And this business letter, you can see it's a formal business letter with certain graphics, a signature, all of that. And all of that code is stored right here. A business proposal. So say you're submitting a request for proposal, an RFP to a customer it might look something like this. You can see that LaTeX has uh, compiled a table of contents and it is indexed to the appropriate page numbers automatically, equipped with a references page, so it's giving you endnotes as well. Here's a newsletter. And in this newsletter, this is interesting because it embeds certain uh, picture files within the text and it is multi-columned. So you can tell LaTeX to display text in a certain number of columns and you control very specifically how text is displayed with embedded pictures, how the headers and footers are displayed and so forth. Here is a full size poster. And you can see here that here's all this complex mathematical equations with a whole bunch of graphical interface stuff here, just demonstrating that you can do a whole bunch with this just based on sending it plain text that's formatted appropriately. 
Here's a laboratory report. Think for people who are doing dissertations or classwork that would be difficult to write out some of these things within Microsoft Word, doing different tables, and so forth. And last but not least, this is a critical edition of a text. And what LaTeX does is allows you to run pretty complex reports for linguistics for those who are working on that with different languages. It handles different languages very well and that type of thing. For more information on LaTeX, you can visit their main webpage, latexproject.org, to get a sense of what this is. It'll tell you some of the free software clients that you could download to generate this type of text. I am using Text Studio, but there's all sorts of different clients because it is free. They also have a tech stack exchange that allows you to ask questions, get help with certain projects that you're working on, and these people respond very fast. And there's all sorts of example files that are already out there. So odds are that if you're looking to do a specific document, it's probably already created and up there on the internet for free for you to grab. And a simple FileMaker database like this can leverage the power of LaTeX.